Hello, this is Debbie Kay with the League of Women Voters of Portland. With the support of Metro East Community Media, we are interviewing candidates for the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Brad Witt, running for state representative, District 31. Welcome, Brad. Thank you very much. It's good to be with you. Good. Please tell us about yourself and why you're running for this office. Hi, um, I'm State Representative Brad Witt, and I'm running for re-election in Oregon's House District 31, which is uh, northwest of Portland. I'm running uh, because our district needs experienced, hardworking, and proven leadership, especially now. Oregon is at a pivotal crossroads as we are looking at uh, moving into our pandemic's recovery. Uh, and as a former uh, sawmill worker, uh, economist, and business representative in the forest products, grocery, and seafood industries, uh, I know that um, it will be Oregon workers who will be responsible uh, for getting us out of recession. As much as I know uh, personally what hard work is all about and the pressures of running a family um, budget. Because of my moderate common sense approach, um, I have enjoyed much success as my constituent's uh, state representative because I have purposefully avoided uh, divisive uh, political agendas as well as party line thinking. Um, I spend lots of time going around my district talking to constituents and regardless of the community, that um, the person's from that I'm talking with, they all tell me the very same thing, that what they want and what they need are good jobs, a roof over their house, food on the table, uh, and access to decent and affordable health care. Um, together, my constituents and I can make this happen, and I am asking them for their vote of confidence once again to send me back to Salem to make this a reality. Thank you. What do you see as the challenges that have been and will continue to be created by the COVID-19 pandemic? How are they impacting effective and efficient administration of Oregon state government? And how do you propose to meet those challenges? The pandemic is testing our healthcare, emergency management and education uh, systems uh, to a maximum, as well as our ability to feed and house uh, the needy. Our greatest challenge uh, going forward will be uh, restoring uh, those capacities, as well as at the same time restoring our state's uh, economy. In the short term, uh, we're going to need to focus on food, housing, medical care, and financial assistance for those folks who have uh, lost their jobs. And to that end, I'm working on a daily basis with local, county, uh, state, as well as federal officials uh, to deal with this pandemic, the crisis, as well as the needs of uh, my constituents. Going forward, we're gonna have to recognize uh, that full recovery is going to be a monumental task. And that is precisely why uh, we need leadership in Salem that is experienced, that's able to get along with everyone and knows how to get the job done. Thank you. Traditionally, the legislature has conducted the decennial redistricting process, which will occur in 2021. Are you comfortable with the current redistricting process? And if not, how would you seek to change it? I am not comfortable with the current redistricting uh, process because there is a perverse incentive uh, that's in operation with having the legislature oversee the entire process. Um, that perverse incentive is quite simply uh, the party in power um, has uh, good reason, um, or some reason at least, uh, to attempt to gerrymander district lines 
uh, so that it benefits uh, candidates from that party's uh, own ranks uh, and, and to enable them again to uh, win election and thereby um, uh, preserve the majority power in, in our state legislature. Uh, it is inbreeding at its worst. In my own instance, 10 years ago, um, the corner of my district boundary would have been my front lawn and my neighbor's fence line. And under no one's measure could either of those be considered a natural uh, geographic boundary. Um, this is insane. It has to change. Uh, I think Arizona offers itself up as a potentially very good model. I intend to be taking a much um, closer look at the way they manage uh, redistricting. And I also know uh, that the League of Women Voters itself has, uh, has long been an advocate and proponent of, um, of this sort of public commission uh, being in charge of redistricting. I, I, I definitely believe that that's a system we have to move towards. Thank you. What are your thoughts on cap and trade proposals intended to mitigate climate change? Are they a good idea or not? Why? Well, carbon reduction in and of itself um, offers the potential for a huge payoff, uh, both in terms of um, our state's economy, as well as the sustainability of planet Earth. But that said, the bills that were considered by the 2019 and 2020 uh, legislative sessions were seriously flawed, flawed to the point that over 120 amendments to those bills uh, couldn't prevent uh, the creation of an enormous bureaucracy under that system, tax revenue uh, literally pouring out of our state harsh consequences for rural Oregonians, Oregonians, or most, perhaps most importantly, uh, couldn't have prevented some of our state's largest polluters from continuing uh, to pollute. So that's why I offered my own alternative plan. Uh, it would have and does feature um, a 10 member public commission uh, to, that would um, uh, award grants to individuals businesses, nonprofits, or public bodies for carbon reduction. It would have been the same uh, tax, but a minuscule bureaucracy. Uh, the dollars would have stayed at home to create additional jobs here in Oregon, and it would have resulted in very fast reduction of carbon, uh, simply uh, because the sooner um, a business or, or an individual applied for a grant and then reduced that carbon, then the sooner that very same entity would have reduced their, their tax liability virtually to virtually zero, possibly. Uh, so it would have been, it is a simple plan, a fast plan, and a very effective plan. Thank you, Brad. I regret that we're out of time and I'm not going to be able to get to the last question and I need to do my closing now. This has been Video Voters Guide. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Please be an informed voter. Visit vote411.org for information about all the races on your ballot and exercise your right to vote. Thank you for watching.